for all of us. It's about predicting where the consumer is going and getting half of it right. One of the things we want to do is create ads that don't suck. Embracing change creates great possibility. I'm Alan Hart, and this is Marketing Today. This week on Marketing Today, we've got a special treat. It's a two-part interview, one with Mark Pritchard, Chief Brand Officer at Procter & Gamble, and Virginie Helios, the Chief Sustainability Officer at P&G. In the first part, we talk to Mark and talk on the business justification for sustainability. And this is on the heels of a conference that he's attending called the Sustainable Brands Summit in Detroit. We also talk about this new initiative that they announced this summer, Brands for Good. And then we transition over to Virginie to talk about specific programs around sustainability and how they're driving that across the enterprise at Procter & Gamble. I hope you enjoy this two-part session with Mark and Virginie. Well, Mark, you probably aren't aware, but I've been trying to get you on marketing today for a couple of years now. So welcome to the show. Well, I wasn't aware of that. So <laughs> thank you, Alan. I'm glad we connected. I am too. I am too. So I know you're at Sustainable Brands Summit in Detroit this week. How do you think about this conference versus all the other conferences that you go to? Why, why this one? Well, you know, I don't attend that many conferences. I really like to be selective about them. And Sustainable Brands is one of those conferences that I make a priority. And the reason why is because it's really the premier conference uh, for sustainability and in particularly for sustainability when it comes to brands. So uh, Coan has just done a magnificent job of bringing together companies from around the world and brands from around the world to descend in, in many places, uh, not just Detroit. The first one I went was in Vancouver. I was just in Tokyo and where we bring, she brings together uh, brands, companies, CMOs, chief sustainability officers, and other thought leaders to really focus on what are the critical sustainability issues that the world is facing and how can brands in particular do something about it. And so I'm quite inspired by this, and uh, it's one that I make a priority. That's great. I know you're announcing that P&G will be a founding partner in the launch of Brands for Good. Can you tell us a little bit about that initiative? What's, what is that about? Yeah, the Brands for Good is a coalition, and it's a coalition of like-minded companies that are focused on using the reach, voices, services, solutions, and innovations of their brands to be able to drive sustainable behaviors, drive sustainable lifestyles, uh, promote uh, ways in which brands uh, can, can innovate in order to make it easy for people around the world to adopt a sustainable lifestyle, adopt sustainable behaviors, and therefore really improve the the sustainability of our planet. So uh, I, I was was made aware of this idea back in, in mm -hmm. Sustainable Brands Vancouver about a year ago and thought it was a great initiative because I'm involved in several other uh, types of, of, of coalitions and collectives. And what I've found is that when when companies and brands come together and and focus on a common mission, what it allows them to do is to hold each other accountable, share best practices, find ways to challenge each other to innovate, and it drives much more collective action and makes things happen more quickly. And I, I firmly believe that when these companies come together to promote sustainable behaviors, lifestyles, make it easy for uh, people of the world to live a sustainable life, then that will indeed happen a lot quicker and it'll be good for both uh, the planet, uh, the people we serve, as well as good for growth in the industry. Got it. Got it. And it seems like the effort, I guess, at least in part, was driven by some research that was done on consumers a couple of years back, maybe. I, curious if you um, can share you know, what you learned. And, and I think there's a lot of uh, discussion going on about purposeful brands in the marketplace and whether purpose is something brands should be driving. Do people, do people, real people walking down the street, do they expect that from a brand? So I'm curious if there's something you could share. Yeah, we get that. 
that question a lot, which is why are brands involved in in societal matters, whether it be, they be social or environmental sustainability? And one of the questions they often ask is, why don't they just stick to selling products? <laughs> and and it, right. it turns right. out that people today are telling us that they expect more from our brands and companies. Uh, they expect brands and companies to do good for society and, and for the planet. In fact, nine out of 10 consumers say they have a more positive image of a brand or a company when it supports the social or environmental cause. More than half say they make purchase decisions based on shared beliefs with brands. And people of all ages, whether they be from Gen Z to millennials to boomers, expect brands to take a stand on important issues. So consumers today are interested in brands doing good for the world. And I, I think are really starting to see that that when, when brands and companies step up to do good, then uh, it's, it's a more sustainable practice. Uh, I, ten, 10 or so years ago, I was involved in some efforts with some, some NGOs and, and I talked about the possibility of maybe doing some things where we could you know, do some marketing along with what they were doing. I said, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. So why not? So, well, that would be because then it would not be authentic. And I said, well, let's find a way to make it authentic because I can donate money right. to your cause but that's not going to have near the effect that it'll have if our brands get involved because our brands reach 5 billion people on the planet every day. So the reach and voice of our brands, when we build sustainability into our business, will have a far greater impact than donating to philanthropy, which is a good idea, but it doesn't have as, as big an effect. So, so I think that's one of the reasons why we do this. And I guess the only other point I would add is that what brands need to figure out and companies figure out, and, and most have, is that this is not just doing good. It also is good for growth. You know, the UN indicates that achieving the sustainable development goals would add $12 trillion to the economy. The OECD estimates there's a $4.5 trillion reward for, for achieving a circular economy from a business model standpoint by 2030. And then we, we have evidence with our own company and, and others have evidence that Brands that have a sustainability impact grow faster than those that don't. So, so there, there's, a, there's a case that being a force for good is also a force for growth. And that's why we focus on this. Awesome. Well, who are the other partners joining you in this? And, and what, what are you guys signing up for? Well, there's a range of partners that will be the founding partners for the hashtag Brands for Good. Uh, PepsiCo, Target, Porter in the Valley. EY, uh, Nestle Waters, National Geographic, Visa, Futura, Dentsu Aegis, SC Johnson, SAP, Global Citizen, and also the ANA, Association of National Advertisers, is, is a partner, and we Spire. So these are the founding partners and affiliate partners. Some of those are affiliates. And what they're signing up for is, is right. really pledging to use their voices and, uh, and reach to promote sustainable behavior. And there are three ambitions. One is to embed environmental and social purpose into the heart of their business, which includes their, their brand promise, products, packages, and the experiences they create. Two is to use their marketing and communications campaigns to influence making sustainable living more accessible. And, and then third is to focus on transforming the field of marketing so we can shift behaviors and drive positive impact. So that's what they're, they're signing up for. Hmm. Uh, the good news is, is, is many of these brands and companies already have examples that they're working on. So for example, the way we look at it is, hmm. is um, we have a laundry detergent that can help save energy. So Tide Pure Clean, which is made up of, of a, a lot of uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, pure ingredients, and it allows you to wash your clothes in cold water, which reduces your energy bill and environmental footprint because cold water washing saves energy. We've got a, a an example of where right. we have taken recycled beach plastic, and we, we actually invested with TerraCycle, take beach plastic, recycle it into materials that then we have put into our head and shoulders and herbal essences products. And that enables you to take 
you know, plastic that would otherwise be wasted and, and, and do good with it. And so, you know, we've got, a, and, and then we're, we're part of the Loop Alliance, which you may have also heard of, that is where more and more companies, many of the companies here are, are involved mm-hmm. in refillable packaging. And uh, so all those ways are, are ways in which we're doing things. And then, but every one of these companies has examples of their own. Right, right. No, those are great examples. I appreciate you sharing those. Um, how, how is this effort in your mind different than, say, what other brands are doing on their own, like a Unilever or a Seventh Generation, as two examples? Well, it's actually, uh, I think they're part of the same activity. Uh, okay. Because what, what the what we would encourage every brand to do and every company to do is their own individual efforts on what works for their particular company and the uh the work that a national geographic would do would be different than what the work of png would do national geographic would right. shine the light on 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 efforts that that are being done uh so they can start to create awareness and um and png we make products so uh, the what i would encourage every company to do is what do you do individually and then come together as collective, uh, which which this brands for good is all about, and then share best practices, come up with ideas, hold each other accountable. For example, having P and G and Nat Geo in the same group, we're actually working with Nat Geo on a uh, a new uh, series that's coming out in the fall called Activate, where we're going to be highlighting six different uh, efforts that are being done to help improve. Uh, sustainability, so like ocean plastic, and um, also uh, gender equality and education, as well as uh, racial inequality and um, and and forestation uh, activities. So, so that's the 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 beauty of these things is that they you you then start finding common ground where you can work together on an alliance while at the same time doing your own thing. I love it. And something personal to me is that I, I went to an MBA program that had a minor in sustainable enterprise, which was 13 years ago. I'm, I'm afraid to admit, <laughs> but, uh, but, um, but I was, I'm glad to see these types of alliances and, and companies like PNG um, putting, putting real effort behind it um, and, and making it. Part yeah. Of you it. know, cause the one thing on that uh, front, Alan, is that what now Companies are starting to see, and this is certainly something that we we discuss many times, is that when they work together, then it drives industry growth mm. and markets grow. And when markets grow, business is better. Right. Many of us in marketing, we all grew up with the notion that you needed to steal market share from other companies. <laughs> the problem with that is one wins, one loses. Right. And that might be great for competition, but it's actually not good for the industry. Stealing market share uh, at, when the market's not growing, I guess, is not good for the industry. Right. Um, it's good. What, what's good for the industry is when the market grows. Right. So when you're innovating and coming up with ways that are driving additional consumption, improving the economic value of a particular market – then the whole market grows and everybody benefits. Right. And the retailers benefit and the consumers benefit because they're getting better, higher quality products. So that's why these collectives, we're still competing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and we absolutely have to compete on the basis, but on the basis of innovation and creativity, but we're united in this, this common uh, mission of being a force for good, which then in turn, turns into a force for growth. That's great. That's great. Well, I want to shift gears just a little bit and kind of step back from the conference and this initiative and just mm-hmm. ask you, there's so much going on in the in the changing marketing landscape. Are there, you know, what what do you think the top two or three priorities should be for CMOs? A lot of CMOs listen to the show. Well, I, you know, the top overarching priority for CMOs is to focus on creating value uh, for the brands and the companies that they that they represent, and doing that in such a in a way that it is sustainable, the many CMOs are 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 considered now the the chief growth officers, thinking about 
what is it we can do to create growth and value? And and so, you know, in our company, our, we have a, a very clear strategy around creating irresistibly superior products, packaging, communications, retail execution, and value. Those are, that's really the strategy. And that's where I spend my time. Uh, I spend my time figuring out how do we do that now? And then how do we invent the future? So another big part of, of, um, of what I would advise CMOs to be thinking about is how do you help your company and the people in your company build, build their business and create growth and value now? And then what are you doing to innovate to invent the future? Because that's a, a big part of the job is, is looking around corners and seeing over the horizon to see what's coming next and, and figure out how you can bring that into your company so you can, you can stay on the cutting edge and innovate for the future for sustainable growth. Thank you. That's great. So I have a couple more questions, more, a little bit more personal the next two. I love asking this question. I hope it doesn't, uh, <laughs> doesn't put you, put you on your back foot if you haven't seen it yet. Is, uh, is there an experience of your past that defines who you are as a person today? Well, the one, the one that, that pops into my head, the most, that is the most salient for me in, in terms of really defining is when, a little over 20 years ago, I was on vacation with my my wife, Betsy, and our, our three daughters, Allison, uh, Natalie, and Caroline. And we, uh, it, was, it was actually a spiritual retreat. And the, the, the leader of that came up to me at the end of, of this and said, you know, I hope you know the good you can do because you're in business. And business will someday be the greatest force for good in the future. It won't be, it won't be religion um, and it won't be... Uh, Congress, it'll be uh, it'll be business because you have such a wide ranging impact, and that really struck me because I, I had, was running our uh, cover girl business at the time, and we had just created a new campaign, and I thought about the campaign and 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 what it represented. It wasn't it wasn't the representation of the standard of beauty that you would consider uh, to be uh, the standard of beauty that I, that I wanted our brand to stand for. It was it was the the, the people in, uh, in that, while they were wonderful, they were too young, they were too thin, they were too white. And we, I, I decided then, I don't want my daughters growing up thinking that is the standard of beauty, which was a little bit more stereotypical. Um, so we ended up making a big change. And uh, we brought in Queen Latifah, we brought in Brandy. Uh, over time, we brought in Ellen DeGeneres and Pink and, and others. So I realized the impact that business can have. And that led me to, you know, when I became CMO some 20 years later, the opportunity to use the voice of our brands as a force for good and uh, use the voice of our brands for, for promoting gender equality and racial equality. And now it'll be sustainability because these brands can have a voice and people pay attention to them. So that was probably the most one of the most profound moments of, of my past that defines at least the mission that I'm on today in order to try to do whatever I possibly can to make the world uh, uh, a better place with with whatever uh, you know responsibility that I have well it's a wise spiritual leader to have put those things together <laughs> <laughs> it was so well yeah a couple questions left uh what advice would you give to your younger self if you were starting all over again the advice i'd give to my younger self is the advice that i give to people today and the advice that i that i or at least the uh, what i ask for today is the strength <laughs> to mm -hmm. be useful I, I have found over time that when when i uh, and get too focused on me, then I get out of whack. And, uh, and so when I get focused on others and being useful to others, everything seems to work out. So I start each day asking for the strength to be useful to others. And that's the advice I would get. And the advice I do give to everyone. And it makes, it makes a huge difference. And when, you know, you really, when, it, when when you do that, it's it's extraordinary how how much first of all how how much better you feel um, because you're helping other people and how much comes back as a result of that and the amount of 
creativity that comes from that and innovation that comes from that and and just positive positive energy. And so it gets back a little bit to our market share discussion. You know, it's the same concept. If you look, you look if you look at world through through a zero sum lens or taking something from someone, boats don't rise. When you look at the world through being useful to others, and 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 using that in a, as a way to amplify, it creates abundance. That's great. Last question for you: What do you feel like the future of marketing is going to look like? Well, you know, it's it's uh, interesting you ask that question. It's it's one of the, the the core missions we are on as a company to literally disrupt uh, the the industry in in a constructive way by reinventing marketing, reinventing brand building as we know it, and we're reinventing media to move from mass blasting, which is with an enormous amount of waste, to much more mass reach. Still reaching a lot of people, but with one-to-one -one precision to drive waste out and make and make that media far more effective, but also useful to the people who we're serving. It's we're reinventing advertising, completely reimagining creativity, and uh, in such a way that I literally can see a world in the not too distant future that is without ads as we know them today, but but that engage people, entertain people, inspire people, and 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 then has our brands be part of conversations and popular culture and become far more useful and interesting to people. And then uh, that leads to reinventing how we work. We're seeing far more of our work coming in in-house mm -hmm. because the people that we hire are, are, I mean, are really, they're smart, they're capable, they're passionate, they have strong values. And we just need to give them the ability to to do as as much as they possibly can, and and we still will have partners, but we'll be much more judicious about that, and and that's changing how we innovate, to where we're you know we're using more lean innovation, operating like a startup. So more and more, I see our brand people as not being necessarily brand managers, but more brand entrepreneurs. And finally, I see I see us reinventing what what citizenship is all about and brands truly being not only a force for growth but a force for good and uh i i see that becoming uh a major part of how uh brand building looks in the future essentially bringing to life what that spiritual leader said more than 20 years ago which is brands and business can someday be the greatest force for good in the future well, Mark, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been fascinating. It was great. Thank you, Alan. Well, why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, so I'm Virginie Helias. I am PNG Chief Sustainability Officer. Well, Virginie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's so nice to have you here. Um, I was earlier uh, when we were recording, I was talking to Mark. And so I'm excited to hear your side of the sustainability initiatives that you've got going on. But before we go there, um, I believe you're the first chief sustainability officer at PNG. And so I'm curious twofold. One, how's the job going? And then two, you know, what led to that new role at the company? Great. So yes, indeed, I'm the first uh, Chief Sustainability Officer, which uh, which talks a lot about the importance of sustainability now for the company. It is really uh, a built-in business strategy. I mean, it is embedded in, in how we innovate, how we build our brands, in, in our partnerships, in, in all our business practices, and really in our culture now. And... Uh, it hasn't been a, it hasn't been a straight line, you know. It has been a journey. Uh, I started in sustainability in, in 2011, uh, and uh, it was a new job. It was a job creation uh, with the single mission, actually, to uh, to bridge between uh, the science of sustainability, which was uh, led by uh, a group of uh, toxicologists and scientists and biologists, uh, and the business, because I. I felt the need to uh, to make stronger connection uh, between sustainability and, and the business, and so that's what um, I have been doing for for seven years. And and uh, at some points there was a, a big reconnection from from the company that 
sustainability cannot be uh, uh, bolted on. Uh, it needs to be and can't be an afterthought. You know, it needs to be totally integrated in in uh, um, in how we we do business. And so the uh, recognition that you know we have a chief communication officer, we have a chief financial officer. We needed to have a chief sustainability officer uh, because it is uh, just now uh, how we uh, how we want to win, how we want to have an impact on the uh, on the business and on society and on the environment. So. So that's how it uh, it came about. Oh, that's great. That's great. And I, I know you've been at P and G for uh, I think most of your career. Is that right? And you, yes, most of yeah. my career. Um, actually, I started with an internship with Unilever, and uh, six oh. months, and then then <laughs> I uh, decided to join P and G. But but really to join P and G to do marketing, which, which is what I've been doing for twenty three years before, kind of stumbling. Uh, upon the the whole world of sustainability, so I'm, my business is 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 not at all you know sustainability is, is really um, my background is is uh, building brands and and innovating and and uh, uh, just uh, when I was leading the um, the detergent business in Europe uh, back in uh, 2003 2004, the business was in bad shape and and I had to find new ideas to revitalize it and and so I tested many ideas and and the one that just rose to the top was the idea that um, with uh, Ariel, which is the leading brand in Europe, you um, it works so well that you can wash your clothes in low temperature. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, that was an idea that uh, um, appealed immediately to people. And especially since at the time, the, the prices of electricity were rising. And, and so I could say, and if you, if you wash your clothes in low temperature, uh, you will see saving on your electricity bill. And so it was a, a, a big hit. The, the, the market share started growing again. We launched across Europe. We launched in the U.S. tied cold water. Uh, but it was not until a year later when Algo launched the movie, The Inconvenient Truth, and, and started mainstreaming the, the concept of global warming that I never heard about before, that I learned that for, for detergents, the biggest environmental impact based on life cycle assessment is really the temperature of the wash machine, it is 80% of the carbon footprint. And so when I was encouraging people to wash in low temperature, not only it was the best commercial initiative, but it was also the best thing I could have done uh, to improve the environmental profile of, of my business. And so this is where it clicked for me. And I said, well, you can actually be a force for good and a force for growth at the same time. And and, and sustainability can be a, a driver for, for business, uh, business growth, a different type of growth. And so um, fast forward, uh, 2011, uh, I uh, pitched the CEO to create this new job. And, uh, and yeah, that's what I've been doing for the past eight years. I love that. And I love the story and the connection between how business can drive results, but also do good. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, well, I know you've announced a bunch of, a bunch of things at the Sustainable Brands Conference. Um, one that I'd love to get your thoughts on is, you shared your membership in the World Wildlife Fund's new resource plastic initiative. And just curious if you wouldn't mind telling listeners, what is that? And, um, you know, what is it, what is its, what is its aim to achieve? Yeah, sure. The, the context for it and for the reason why PNG is, is, a, is a partner in this initiative is what we launched a year ago, which is called Ambition 2030, which is really our roadmap to uh, enable uh, positive impact and uh, across our supply chain, our brands, our uh, employees, and also what we say society at large, which are the goals that are too big for, for us alone to achieve and where we need transformative partnership to realize. And, and the WWF uh, resource plastic is, is one of these transformative partnership uh, to address a goal that is too big for one company alone to realize. And uh, one of our societal goals is that we will develop solutions so that no PNG packaging find its way to the ocean, which is obviously a very aspirational and very big goal, but we have very specific strategies that underpins it. Um, and, and, and one of them is to, uh, join others to, to address the, uh, the issue of plastic leaking, uh, into the environment. And, and this is why, uh, 
PNG has been uh, a founding member of the Alliance to End Plastic Waste, which is, you know, this uh, cross value chain initiative uh, to um, to help address the, the problem of plastic leaking into the environment, especially the ocean. And so when WWF uh, announced that they had this uh, idea of creating a, a platform to come up with uh, common language, common metrics, uh, common understanding of the best practices. We thought it would be kind of a wonderful opportunity to uh, to support some of the efforts like the Alliance to End Plastic Waste because if I look at climate change, uh, th- there is one very simple metric that everyone can rally around, which is the 1.2 degrees or 2 degrees. Now we are 1.5 in terms of, you know, we can't go beyond the threshold. So what are the... Um, kind of uh, science-based target that each company needs to have uh, as their contribution to um, to climate, we don't have the equivalent on plastic. You know, there are very different ways to, uh, to account for a plastic leakage, to account for what it means to have a circular economy on plastic. So I think the, the effort of WWF on, on resource plastic is very, very needed and very welcome. So we are uh, very happy to be a to be a member. What you're doing with plastics is pretty interesting, and uh, and I think transformative to create that much transparency around measuring and tracking um, what other people are doing as well. I also know that you're now piloting with Loop in the New York metro area. Can you describe what what that is and and um, what Loop is? I, I, my equation to it from a old U.S. perspective is it's kind of like the old milkman where they would bring you milk in bottles and uh, and then pick up the empties and refill them and bring them back. Yes. But I'd love your explanation <laughs> for it. Yes, so sure. and, and we are piloting actually in the uh, New York metro area, but also in Paris. Uh, so we mm. have two pilots. And, and it is indeed like modernizing the milkman, but, but it's doing it across many product categories. And, and the more uh, categories participate – the more successful loop will be. Uh, it, it is basically you order online uh, a product that um, where we've replaced the disposable packaging by uh, durable packaging, and and um, they they come in a special, very nice tote when uh, you use them, and then when you are ready, uh, you put the empties back in the tote. You schedule a pickup. They are cleaned. They are refilled. And they're ready to be reused. I mean, it's so it's a fully circular e- economy of, of packaging there. But what, what, what is very interesting is that indeed we, uh, we develop Loop as a waste free proposal. And, and, and we thought that what people would, uh, really love about, uh, about it is that there was absolutely no, no packaging and, and no packaging waste and, and no guilt of, you know, what is the packaging, uh, going to end up, you know, at, at the end when I'm done with it. Uh, and yes, people uh, actually enjoy the, the fact that it's uh, waste-free, but they are delighted by, by the, the premiumness of, of the experience because it's, it's like a, a total reinvention of, of, you know, your, your daily interaction with, with daily products, you know, and, and all of a sudden those, those products are becoming, uh, uh, smart, thoughtful, counterworthy because they are beautiful. Uh, and so we learned for two, two years with consumers before launching the pilot. And, and we've been very impressed by, you know, how people are describing the, their, their new experience with, uh, with those products that, uh, have now a new meaning in their life almost. Right. Well, and, and PNG operates at such a large scale. I'm curious, you know, why, why is it important to pilot something like Loop, which is relatively small today? Yeah. And, and, and we do believe in Loop uh, as part of the future of consumption. I mean, so much so that, that we've taken some equity stake in the, in the Loop uh, company. Mm. Um, but, but, you know, typically PNG starts slow and then scale very fast. And, and we need to learn. I mean, this is, this is a very new, uh, business model. And, and there are so many things that, that we need to learn. I mean, from, consumer adoption, you know, I mean, it's critical that people 
uh, shift a significant portion of their shopping basket to Loop because if they just try, and we know many people will try because it's a very interesting concept for many, but if they just try one or two products, uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work economically. It doesn't work environmentally. So, so we need to understand the depths of the consumer adoption. We also need to learn a lot on the supply chain. You know, this uh, uh, use, clean, refill, reuse, uh, the circular supply chain is totally new to us. Uh, and there's a lot of things we need to, to learn to make it right, again, economically and environmentally. And, and finally, we need to ensure that the environmental benefits which was kind of the starting point of loop, uh, actually uh, realizing in, in, in real in real life, you know. And, and uh, for instance, we've um, we've done some life cycle assessment before starting uh, loop, and and we have a few hypotheses that we need to validate. Like uh, for each order, we need a minimum of three products, for instance. Uh, mm-hmm. Otherwise, you know, it, it's not uh, more environmental friendly than the uh, the alternative uh, shopping method. And and we need for each packaging to uh, recycle at least five times, you know. So all these things we need to learn in pilots before we scale. Right. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, you've talked about the ambition 2030 roadmap um, earlier, but I'm curious you know, if you net it out, what is the end goal for PNG with the change you're trying to drive through sustainability? You know, end goal, I don't know, because we will never be done. And this is why, actually, we, we launched the Ambition 2030. So we have, uh, you know, some some timing there that we can figure out what we'll do by then. But really what we want to do by 2030 is to reinvent the new uh, the model of consumption. And, and we, you know, we call it responsible consumption. And we believe that through, you know, the influence of our brands, I mean, we touch 5 billion people through our brands every day around the world, you know, and, and across our supply chain, uh, and and also through the transformational partnership that we are doing, I think one of the very good example is the uh, this uh, sub goal that we have, which is that we will develop uh, solutions so that no PNG packaging finds its way to the ocean. And it's clearly something that there are things we can do, like like Loop, you know, within our control. But there are things that requires a much broader collaboration, and this is why PNG is a founding member of the Alliance to End Plastic Waste. You know, with 34 other companies, like the the largest initiative of its kind. I mean, raising 1.5 billion dollar uh, to to address the issue of plastic leaking into the environment and especially the ocean. So, so that's what really what we aim. We, I mean, our ambition 2030 covers many aspects, but uh, the, the most challenging are the ones that are, we call it our societal goal. One of them is no PNG packaging to the ocean. Another one, for instance, is to recycle all our uh, diapers, which is a big business for PNG. And that's also a big challenge. So we have developed a technology to do that. Right, right. Well, it- we started the conversation, and you know, you're um, you've been in sustainability for a number of years. But before that, you were on the brand side, you're a brand leader, um, leading businesses. And there's so much shifting and changing in the marketing landscape today. Um, what do you think? You know, if you were advising the listeners to this program, you know, what would be the top two or three priorities in your mind as a brand leader? Yeah, you know, I think it's really about um, enabling and inspiring responsible consumption, enabling through innovation, product and packaging innovation and business model innovation, uh, and inspiring uh, by by leveraging uh, the brand's voice, you know, to, to promote sustainable behavior. And and of course, it's it's different for each brand depending on, you know, where their biggest impact is. You know, I talked about Pampers and Pampers is all about reducing the material we use and, and finding new diapering solution, recycling our diapers. But, you know, for uh, Tide or, or Ariel in Europe, it's all about the temperature of the washing cycle, which means, you know, you you innovate to develop product that, that works as well in cold water as in uh, warm water. But, but, but then I think that beyond what each brand can do, uh, there is a, a mission, a collective mission that we need to do to, to change the cultural norm. Because if we want to reinvent, reinvent the model of consumption, it's all about changing the culture, you know, ma- making sustainable behaviors desirable, even irresistible, so that people, there is a, you create a, a traction, a pool. And, and this is really the objective of the Brands for Good collaboration that uh, uh, PNG and others launched at, uh, with Sustainable Brands uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, it's how do you uh, create that pool for sustainable behavior? Hmm. Well, 
I want to switch gears a little bit and talk a little bit more about you. Um, and I love asking this question, which is, has there been an experience of your past that defines or makes up who you are today? Hmm. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, when I was in my uh, early 20s, uh, I had a, a near-death experience when I was doing an internship in, uh, in Africa. And uh, fortunately, you know, I came back from it. And, and, and this has really taught me that... Um, I have no power in, in kind of adding more days to my life, but, but I do have power in, in, in adding more life to my days, meaning, you know, more meaning. And, uh, and, and the job I'm doing, you know, is meaningful. You know? And it's all about what matters most to me. It's all about harmony with yourself, with others, and with the world around you. And, and so I have a, a full integrity between who I am and, and what matters to me most and the job I'm doing, which is an amazing place to be. Mm, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. If you don't mind, can I ask a follow-up question? Sure. Um, I mean, what, what, um, how, was it an illness? Was it a, a, a situation you found yourself in? It was in? an illness and, and which uh, okay. in developed regions could have been uh, immediately, uh, you know, healed. But because right. I was in the middle of nowhere, uh, um, I uh, was uh, taken to a, a local hospital. They misdiagnosed what I had and uh, mm. I entered into a, a coma. And uh, fortunately, my boss at the time, kind of uh, tour the whole city and, and, and discover me like just one minute before it was too late. So. Oh, wow. Wow. What a, what a story. And, and for you to have turned that into such a powerful, like positive focus for your life going forward. Um, that's yeah. amazing. I, I do, you. I do believe that uh, all things that happen <laughs> to people, you know, are, are meant to be and, and uh, you can turn, turn anything into a, into a positive force. So what, what advice would you give to your younger self, maybe as a career, if you were, if you were starting over again? Be brave, not perfect. <laughs> that's a great, that's a, uh, that, that should be on a sign or a t-shirt somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it is powerful. And, and I'm, I, I must add, especially for women, because we have a tendency to, to go for perfection, which is, um, a trap and so instead we should replace with courage so be brave not perfect got it well and the last question for you back to marketing um what do you see the future of marketing looking like very bright actually you know because and because of of initiatives like uh, brands for good you know where mm -hmm. so many brands uh joined the the movement you know and, and and we were all impressed by how fast that just took off and 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 I think there is a growing number of, of businesses, you know, realizing that it's not about marketing, you know, it's about mattering. And, and, and you know, and I think more and more brands are seeing growing consumer expectation and are eager to, to address this, you know, beyond the functional benefit of our brands. It's all about, you know, what this brand presents, represents in terms of values and, and uh, how it can actually help people realize their own values. You've got another great quote there. It's not about marketing. It's about mattering. Yeah, it's not and mine, but still I, I make it mine <laughs> because I, I do believe in it. Uh, so, yes. It's phenomenal. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Hi, it's Alan again. Marketing Today was created and produced by me with writing and editing by Kevin Greeley, social media support by Megan Woods, art and graphic design by Sarah Dell. If you're new to marketing today, please feel free to write us a review on iTunes or your favorite listening platform. Don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends and colleagues about the show. I love to hear from listeners. and You can contact me at marketingtodaypodcast.com. There you'll also find complete show notes with links to anything we talk about on any episode. You can also search our archives. I'm Alan Hart, and this is Marketing Today.